Hi, welcome. Thanks for joining me on this episode of Build Your Own. We're going to build price and option a 2018 Kia Stinger. I think the GT. I think the GT. Uh, before we get into the build and go over this overview, uh, I just want to remind you that if you find this content helpful or entertaining, to please like, share, and subscribe to my channel. I would really appreciate it. Okay, so the Kia Stinger, it's an all brand new car. All brand new car. I just saw one on the road yesterday. And I thought, yeah, I need to do this car. Brand new car. I guess Steven Tyler's the, the spokesperson. So what I want to do is because it's a brand new car and there's a lot of cool stuff and I want to go over it with you together, I purposely did not even go over the content of this car so we can discover it together. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of go through these tabs here. I already clicked drive, as you can see. Um, we're going to kind of go through these tabs and then we'll build one. All right, then we'll build one. So let's see what, what the car is all about. Let's discover it together. Uh, the movie looks pretty cool. So here are those tabs. I guess we start off at overview, and maybe we'll go back there. But we'll go through here, and, and if there's a plenty of information here, then maybe we'll stop and just jump into the build. So we'll just kind of see how it goes. You know, I don't want to make this video super, super, super long, but I want it to have everything in it that would help you make an informed buying decision if, if a Kia Stinger is in your future. All right, or whatever the case may be. So let's find out a little bit more about the car. Well, first things first, it's very attractive. It's an extremely attractive car. And wow, it looks like it's got a nice big tire there for, uh, you know, as a performance car should and would. So what do we got here? There's a two different trims here. There's a 3.3 liter twin turbo V6, or you can get the two liter turbocharged four cylinder engine. Each is paired with uh, with a gearing optimized version of Kia's next generation eight speed automatic transmission. So what they're saying is, each engine gets the same transmission. They just they just gear the transmission differently for each engine. Um, so what do we got here? So the 3.3 liter makes wow an impressive 365 horse, 376 pound feet of torque, and here. Wow, at 1,300 RPMs, I mean right off of idle, 0 to 60 in 4.7 seconds. I'm willing to bet that this motor is pretty legit, and yeah, now that I know this, we're probably going to go for that V6 for sure, or the GT model for sure, because that's going to give us this V6. But let's move over, and let's learn about this turbocharged 4. That's going to give us a very respectable 255 horse, 260 torque, available as low as 1400 rpms all the way to 4000 rpms nice flat torque cu uh, curve uh, 0 to 60 and 5.9 what was the 0 to 60 on this one 4.7 uh, the 376 1300 uh, so the the rpm range or the torque range is much broader on this car too in addition to being well substantially more um, is there another arrow to go over no let's move down what are some key features of this particular engine well, it's a gasoline direct in injection engine. That's why they say GDI, gasoline direct injection. Uh, twin scroll turbocharger. Same deal that BMW also talks about their twin scroll turbochargers. Electronic intake, continu continuously variable valve timing, uh, variable charge motion actuator. Not sure what that is. Idle stop and go. What about this one? Does it have any key features? Um... Twin turbochargers, dual continuous variable valve timing, cylinder heads with integrated exhaust manifold, idle stop and go. Right, gotcha. Um, they've got some shopping tools here. Uh, pipes made to sing. Uh, can we hear the exhaust? Let's see. Sounds good. Sounds pretty good. So we're experiencing 365 audible horsepower. That's pretty cool. The only other time I've seen a website offer you a sound clip is Ferrari. I did a Ferrari 488 GT build, GTB build, and they did the same thing. If you want to see that, I'm going to put a link up here just if you want to take a look at that. It's pretty cool. Um, yeah, looks good. Very attractive car. Uh, what is it? More powerful than the BMW 540 Grand Coupe and Audi S5 Sportback with a higher top speed and faster 0 to 60. These guys have really done their homework. I was reading that they basically tuned and tweaked this car out at the Nürburgring, which is a world-famous racetrack in Germany. 
Um, let's see, horsepower. So the Kia Stinger, yeah, it does have more than the A7, but I thought they said the S7. It says more powerful than the 440i Grand Coupe and Audi S5 Sportback. There it is right there, Audi A5. But why does they say, they say S is here, you see that? They say S is here, and the 440, right? But I guess the 640 would be the same. Yeah, the 640 would be the same as the 440, as far as engines are concerned. I'm, I wish they'd show the S, but they don't show the S. But okay, I'm going to give it to them. We could look that up, but we're not going to worry about that. It's making impressive horsepower. And, and it's there it is right there. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. There it is right there. You're probably like, look, look. So there it is right there. Um, wow, impressive. Let's take a look at the torque. And very impressive. That's what really makes the difference. This is what you really feel on the road. Yeah, the horsepower is all cool. The torque is what you really feel on the road day to day. The torque is what pushes you back in your seat. Uh, what's the MSRP? Very good. Wow. Wow. Zero to 60. Wow. Well, that's close and it's negligible, but wow, right? The car on all metrics, right? These are metrics. On all metrics, it's be well, on, on these key metrics anyway, it's beating them. Uh, what are they saying? So it's got Brembo brakes. It's got Michelin brand tires. They're running 225 up fronts and 255s in the rear. The, you got big 13-inch, almost 14-inch rotors in the front and almost 13 and a half inch rotors in the rear uh show stopping style right available brembo brakes right we're going to be getting the brembo brakes i can tell you that um what else they got here um dynamic at the core the foundation of an authentic gran turismo right the gt style car uh begins and ends with outstanding chassis right that's the suspension and everything chassis engineering click on a spot below to explore some of the stinger's most notable drive technologies all right let's do that uh, electronically controlled suspension integrated into the McPherson strut front and five link rear suspension geometry the available electronically controlled suspension offers suspension tuning for the GT1 and GT2 drive modes the system monitors and adapts to everything from road conditions to vehicle behavior to deliver to deliver maximum driving pleasure very cool I'm not gonna read all of those so don't worry but let's take a look we've got available all-wheel drive okay and while I'm talking, obviously you can be scrolling through that and reading some. So we'll just do that. I think that'll keep it moving. Available all-wheel drive. Nice. What do we got here? Electromechanical steering. So a lot of car manufacturers these days are going away from the, the belt-driven power steering pump. Now it's electromechanical. So that's cool. Saves on parasitic drag, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Some people love it. Some people hate it. Um, and every manufacturer does theirs a little bit different. Uh, rear wheel drive. We're definitely going to probably get ours in rear wheel drive. We'll kind of see how that goes, depending on what packages we want and, and if it's available in all wheel drive. I think all wheel drive is a great op option, which is why I love the Audis. Um, so if we can get it, we will. I know from a purist standpoint, you want the rear wheel drive, but hey, we got to drive this thing every day, and I want it to have awesome traction. So let's see. It's got a great aerodynamic design. It says sculpted to be sculpted to be aggressively aerodynamic. Um, it is an attractive car. It is an attractive car. Look at that. It's got a whole flat bottom to control the airflow underneath the car. Controlling the air on that goes over the car, it's just as important to control the air that travels underneath the car. Absolutely. Um, what do they got here? They didn't even tell us models to fit your mood. All right. Uh, smart. Right, smart mode, the Stinger's internal computer learns your driving behavior and adapts to it automatically. The more you drive, the more the Stinger optimizes its performance to your unique driving style. That's cool. Then you got the eco mode, of course. That's about saving everything. Then you got comfort mode. This is the default mode, offers smooth acceleration, comfortable ride. It's all about making each trip from start to finish feel seamless. Then you got sport, right? We all know what sport's going to give us. And then you got custom, where you can mix and match that together, huh? All right, looks pretty good. Let's um, let's uh, let's hit the back button. Let's hit the back button, and let's just scroll down from this main overview page really quick. Um, what do we got here? This is just telling us some zero to sixty stuff, because uh, we've already visited this drive section. That's where we started off at. But I just kind of want to go through this 
really fast. Some of this may be redundant. We're not going to go through all the style stuff. Uh, but I want us to look at the interior and do all that before we jump into the build. All right. So obviously an attractive car. Really, really good looking car. We're not going to get too far into that because, well, it's just going to take up a lot of time. So we won't. Uh, it's got nice curves, unyielding style. Yep. Innovations. That's what I want to know more about. It's got a Harman Kardon sound system. Uh, Kia DriveWise, what is this? Advanced technology at your service. Uh, a drive blind spot collision, uh, driver attention warning, uh, and I'm sure there's quite a few more things. Uh, UVO connectivity, Apple CarPlay, of course, Android Auto, Bluetooth wireless, uh, and diagnostic capabilities for the car. Let's come back up here really, really fast. Okay, I just wanted to make sure that they didn't have a scroll section like like we just scroll through right here with a few ribbons and I didn't want to miss any notable information but we get a good look at not only the interior layout but all the airbags look at all these side I think they call these side curtain airbags so you got a lot of safety in this car you got performance you've got aesthetics right the good looks and 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 you have safety and technology right <laughs> here's safety right you've got the whole construction they're showing you the cage um, Da, 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 right, I was just telling you about the Nurburgring. I told you they were out there at the Nurburgring tuning this thing. Um, we're not going to get too deep into the safety stuff, but let's. I think it's worth taking a look because it is important. The safety is important. Um, let's see if we can catch some stuff here. Let's see. What are they going to tell us about the tires? Anti lock braking system. Yeah, we know that. Fine. Um, hill start assist. Helps momentarily keep your vehicle in place while you move off an incline. That's also, that's really, really helpful, actually. Uh, traction control system. Mm -hmm. Prevents those wheels from slipping. And then you got a cornering braking control engineer to help you stay on track and in control through the curves. So I guess if you might come in a little hot through a curve, it might save your butt. All right, and then it's going to show us the side curtain airbags. All right, let's hit the back button. And then media center. Do we need to do any of that? I don't think we do. Here's what we do need to do, however. Let's go up and build this thing. I think we've looked at enough. We've overviewed enough of it. So let's jump into a build. I'm going to go ahead and get us there. Okay, so here we are. We're at the point where we're going to choose our, our model and our trim level. Because what I do know like we were talking about in the beginning is I know that I want the V6. So if we look at all these trim levels, you know, we've got the Stinger and its 2-liter trim level, and the base MR MSRP on this thing is $31,900. So maybe in the beginning I said, oh, hey, I'm going to build out a GT. Maybe we're just going to look at the whole model lineup. How about we do that? Because what's going to happen is there's probably not going to be many options, right? When you go to next step, you know, and when you get over here to the options section, there's not going to be many options because you're kind of getting what you get right here. They're telling you what you get. So there's not going to be a whole bunch of things to add. So let's we're going to look at the whole model lineup, I think. So right now it's checked at the 2 liter. That's going to give us that 255 horsepower engine, the 8-speed transmission with paddle shifters, the smart key with push-button start. We still get the Apple uh, CarPlay and the Android Auto. Wow, leather seat trim and heated front seats. Wow. Let's get more details really quick on that because it's worth <laughs> noting, isn't it? Um, real fast, real fast. I'm just kind of looking real quick. Uh, here's our fuel mileage, 22 city, uh, 29 highway, 25 combined. Um, just kind of scrolling through real quick, just seeing if there's anything notable worth talking about. Uh, interior. Uh, what do we have? You got that seven-inch touchscreen. I guess it, it, the upgrade. Okay, we'll 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 come back to that. All right, so that looks good. And all-wheel drive. What does that move the price up to? That adds twenty-two hundred dollars to the to the fee. Now, if we want to move, wow, that's a big jump. Let's go ahead and hit next step. And okay, so for colors, they're only giving us a few colors. And for packages on. The base Kia, you're looking at the Kia DriveWise package. It's two grand, and that's going to give you basically all the stuff that you really want: the rain sensing wipers, the high beam, the lane departure, the lane keep, the rear cross traffic, all the good stuff. <laughs> all the good stuff. All right. They only give you three colors, but it's all the good stuff. 
They don't really give you a good interior shot, and that's fine. Um, let's take a look at options real fast. Yeah, the options is just, this is basically just accessory stuff. That's kind of like what I was saying. So on the Kia Stinger, on the 2-liter Stinger, the only option to get, just to remind you, is the Kia DriveWise package for two grand, and it's worth getting, right? That one's definitely worth getting. It's the, really the only thing to pick, and you've got three colors to choose from. So I'm going to hit the back button. And then if you go up to the premium, right, and then, of course, make note that if you go with the all-wheel drive, all-wheel drive seems to always be a $2,200 option no matter what the model is, okay, no matter what the model is. The premium uh, gives you that. You still got that same engine, but now I think you're getting a better a better wheel because they're mentioning 18-inch alloy wheels. You got the bigger navigation screen because this one was the 7-inch. I did catch that when I was looking at the specs, and now we're up to the Harman Carton. Right, you already got leather in here, so now that you're up to that, the alloy wheels, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Let's go to more details. Are they going to tell us anything else more notable? Not really, so I'm not going to probably mess with that tab anymore. Let's just go to next step. Right, this is thirty-seven hundred dollars or thirty-seven thousand dollars. Basically, if you added all-wheel drive to it, now you're looking at forty grand more or less. Let's go to next step. Get a few more colors. Get a few more colors. Still got the Kia DriveWise package. Is that standard for these lower models that they're just not included? Got a few more colors, right? Uh, and like I said, options is going to be that same stuff. These are all things that you can pick up at Kia at the dealer anytime at the accessories, right? This, just go to the parts department, and you can pick this stuff up. Now, oh, I didn't notice this. This remote start, if you get one of these that doesn't have it, I definitely upgrade and get that. I probably definitely upgrade and get these mud guards too because it'll protect all that gunk and road tar that sticks to the bottom of your car from getting right there. I'd also probably get, uh, you know, I probably get, um, I'd probably get that little, uh, what is that? The door sill. I get the door sill. I think that's attractive, and it's probably not very much money. All right, it's 130 bucks. I'd get that. All right, let's move on. Let's go back, look at the other model. So now we're getting over here to the GT. And once you get into the GT, which is what I was talking about when I first started this video, now you get the 3.3 liter V6, putting out 365 horse. You get the LED headlights. You get the 19-inch alloys with the Michelin Pilot Sport tires, the Brimble brakes, the nine-speaker audio system, right? Upgrades available. Yep, we're gonna, we would do ours in all-wheel drive, so that would put it just over $40,000. And then let's see what a lot more colors. You got a very cool interior color now. You got the red and you got the black. You got more colors. You still got the Kia DriveWise package. And if you go over here to options, it'll probably be those same old options. And yeah, they are. It's the same old options basically. So remote push start. Oh, that's for your, yeah, for the remote control. I think it's a cool feature. I still think you should get it. I think it's cool. It's only 500 bucks. Um, so that's cool. So then if you go up to the GT1, what does that give you? That gives you all the stuff that's here plus what? Now you get the Harman Kardon Quantum Logic. So that must be the really good one. Now you get the 8-inch touchscreen. Oh, so this GT gets the 7-inch touchscreen like the 2-liter does. Okay. Um, then you get the 8-inch touchscreen and what's available, right? Same colors and then the Kia DriveWise and, and yeah, that's it. Uh, so all of them, it's basically the Kia DriveWise. And then what, the GT2? Come on, give us everything with the GT2. But it says heads up, uh, upgrades available. So this one gets all of this stuff, plus there it is, the Kia DriveWise. Uh, shift by wire, interesting. Napa leather trim and a heads up display. We do that also in all-wheel drive, of course. Next step, right? Ooh, it only comes with black leather interior. You can get an all-season package. Right, that's if you want to run your car in the winter time, then you can change up your wheels. I think that's kind of cool. What is this? Uh, our oh, the 18-inch wheels are limited to 130 miles an hour. Okay, uh, and then options are gonna be that same stuff. Yeah. Okay. Well, really cool. Really cool. We just went over the whole model lineup. We've gone over the colors. We've looked at the specs. We know the packages. We know the upgrade. We know that every one of these cars basically has to have the Kia DriveWise package put on it, except for if you get the GT2. Um, and we know that there really are no options to speak of other than stuff that you can go pick up at the parts counter, and it's just literally accessories. Um, 
We've seen the exterior and the interior. The car is really, 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 really attractive. It's a wonderful car. I think it's a lot of car for the money. I don't know if I'd pay $50,000 for one of these things, but you can get into the GT. You can get into that V6 for under $40,000. So the GT might be the best brand, the best way to go, although I probably want to get the bigger um, stereo. I probably want to get the bigger uh, touchscreen. And I probably want the Harman Kardon uh, stereo, right? They just say a nine-speaker audio system. Is it the same one as this? I could do some digging. You could do some digging. We could probably find that out. But I'm going to probably guess that it probably is, right? Because this one gets bumped up to that Harman Kardon and the 8-inch, and so does this one. So really, this car sort of kind of is this car with a few GT uh, differences on it, right? But still nonetheless cool and a lot of car for... $38,000. You saw the comparison against uh, Porsches and BMWs and Audis. It's a lot of car for the money. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this build. Now this car, <laughs> we have it. We have the GT checked. I can see the estimated price says 52300 So let's do a GT with all-wheel drive. Let's go next step really fast. I'm, just, I'm not going to worry about colors. And I'm just going to pick all season. Is that going to charge us extra? No, it's not. So about forty-three thousand dollars for that GT that we were talking about. About forty-three grand, right? About forty-three grand all in. I don't. Oh, what what is this? All season tire package. If I got the all season tire package, I wouldn't. I probably just get the Kia DriveWise package for now. So yeah, forty-three thousand. Uh, oh, it's a all. It's a no cost option. So yeah, I'll do it. Yeah, forty-three thousand four fifty. It's a lot of car for the money. It's a lot of car for the money. So I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up this build. I think that's a heck of a car. Let me know in the comments below which trim is appealing to you and why. Okay? Thanks for joining me.